Now, Botox injections have, in recent years, become undisputedly the most popular of all cosmetic procedures, with well over 4 million patients being treated with Botox last year alone. So this morning, we're demystifying it. What's in it? Is it dangerous? How is it applied? And uh, are, are there people who aren't suited to it? Dr. Mark Hamilton is here to explain all. Good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, Mark, well, first of all, tell us what is Botox? We all, most people would know, but for people who don't, sure. what exactly is Botox? Okay. Botox is a product that's uh, applied into the muscle and it basically stops that muscle moving. It's the product itself that, uh, that helps stop the, the, the wrinkles forming. Uh, it, it stops that excessive expression that you have. So uh, it's a very good product. It works very well. In my opinion, it's pretty safe. And uh, but, but it is botulism, isn't it? Like, but so that's what, when people hear the word, they sort of go, mm, like you know, you're injecting something like that yeah. into your system. Th that's where its origins are from. However, the disease itself you're talking about significant uh, levels of, of, of this product, mm -hmm. but in the cosmetic industry, we're talking about small, tiny amounts that you use to, to, to freeze the muscle, essentially. So I don't think there's anything to worry about. The, the two of them are very different things. You couldn't cause any illness, botulism uh, from now, it. Where are the most popular places um, to get injected for, for men and women? It's the mm -hmm. forehead and around the eye area, right. isn't it? Yeah. That's right. Um, it's the it's the the muscles of facial expression, the the frown lines in between the the, the eyebrows, the crow's feet uh, around your eyes, and the forehead. Those are typically the areas that you'd you would inject. However, there are some advanced Botox techniques you can use in other parts of the face. But uh, by and large, yeah, you're right. Th those three areas in the upper part of your face are the most popular. Now, for people who are thinking of getting it done, does it hurt? No, it's it's remarkably painless. This is the thing. There's a there's a there's a myth that uh, because we're putting tiny little injections that it's that it's painful you can use a topical cream um, that, uh, that numbs the that area, numbs the area yeah. but by and large this isn't necessary and, and most clients of mine remark that that they haven't even felt any pain at all so I think that's something I would I'd, I'd like to get across that it's just it, it's, it's not, not painful, painful. No. Now, I mean okay we can all sort of say we go in are there any pretests that will sort of determine if, if you're suitable for it. Is everyone suitable for it? Are there side effects? Are people going to have major adverse effects if they get it because of certain conditions they might have? Yeah. No, you, you're absolutely right. A consultation before you have any treatment is of, of paramount importance. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably the, the, the most important part of the whole treatment process, the consultation. What you've got to ascertain is what the expectations are of the of the client, um, there there will indeed be clients that, that that come to see me that that are not suitable for the treatment, particularly if you're much older, if your skin has lost a lot of its elasticity, Botox may not be the treatment for, for you. For you, mm, you exactly. Need, you need a facelift. <laughs> That's always an option. Yeah. <laughs> now, well, you, well, sometimes you hear about a drooping effect after Botox. Mm. What what causes that, or what is that? Okay. Um, if you've lost a lot of elasticity in your skin, uh, then essentially the, uh, the skin does not spring back into uh, its, its natural position. So if you have too much Botox, if it's put in the wrong area, that is a potential side effect. If you get someone who knows what they're doing, someone with a, a reasonable level of, of ex expertise... But how do you know if somebody knows what they're doing? Well, if you're a doctor, if you're sort of, if you're, you're saying, oh, well, look, this is a qualified doctor who knows mm -hmm, how to do mm -hmm. this, you go along to, and a lot of them are in beauty salons now sure. as well, so yeah. they're not like in clinics, so mm -hmm. you're going along. How do you know? Well, you, first, first and foremost, you must, you know, ask the doctor how much experience uh, that he's had or she's had, um, ask to see before and after photographs. And word of mouth is probably as good as, as good as any. If, if you've had friends who've had a good experience with a doctor, someone who's been around for a long time, that's your best guide, in my opinion. What about these people who are just, you literally see them and nothing else moves but the mouth? Mm. Had, like, would you recommend something like that where the whole face is bright, basically frozen? That's an awful lot of Botox as well. It I is. Mean, I would you do that procedure to somebody? By and large, I wouldn't. It's up to the client. It's their own personal preference. Um, 
By and large, I think there is a compromise. I think we can target particular areas, leave a little bit of movement that keeps people guessing. Um, it's true that we, we see so many celebrities on TV nowadays who've had Botox, and it's commented a lot in the media that, they've, that they're expressionless, yeah. um, particularly in the acting profession. They can't express themselves facially. And uh, so what you do is you, you, you tailor it, you do particular areas, you, you limit the amount you do, you, you use it carefully, and you know you can you can get a very nice natural look without overdoing mm -hmm. it. We we have quickly just some people that we assume have had Botox, like mm -hmm. people like stars like Goldie sure. Hawn and stuff like that. Sure. Now I think I think someone like Goldie Hawn, if she has it done, I think she has said before that she mm -hmm. has had Botox. Yeah. I mean she looks well. Mm, just she look like there, you know. Yeah. There are well, I've seen her in other things, but there she looks like yes, she's had implants in her lips. She looks like she's had sure, it done. Sure. This is the problem. What's the difference between Botox and fillers? Yeah, well, uh, Botox will limit the amount of expression that you'll have um, in in the muscles in your face, whereas fillers actually improve the volume in in the face. Typically, they'll go into the lip area mm -hmm. or other areas around the, the, the mouth and, and provide volume.